My name is Ian Russell. I was the writer, director, editor, producer, visual effects, fight choreographer, dance choreographer, sound engineer, you name it, for Cybernetic Showdown. Cybernetic Showdown was inspired partially by The Omega Man with Charlton Heston, but in general, just martial arts, B-movies, post-apocalyptic, blood, guts, kung fu fighting, one-liners, any 80s over-the-top action hero. The difference being Cybernetic Showdown is a little bit more self-aware and silly. Cybernetic Showdown was the follow-up to our first movie, The Killing Death. We thought The Killing Death went okay. We didn't know what we were doing and we still managed to come through with a movie. So we figured, well, now that we know what we're doing a little bit, let's do something better. So the script was a lot more ambitious. There was a lot more locations, a lot more actors. There was fight scenes, a dance number. There was sword fighting. There was all kinds of stuff. The intention was always to make it like a live action video game, almost like a Sega CD quality. So we always wanted the visual effects to look corny and done after the fact not realizing how hard that would be. Some of the innovative things I thought we were doing with the movie ended up being used by other films in the interim, like Crank 2 and Scott Pilgrim, which kind of stung. Had things been different, we would have been first. The hardest part of making Cybernetic Showdown was everything. It was hugely ambitious, especially for no money. And we thought, well, part of the look is gonna be really cheesy CG effects. So we deliberately filmed everything without the visual effects. The plan was to do them later, not realizing that that created way more work. That's why it took almost 12 years to finally finish the damn thing. I wish during the making of the movie that we hadn't relied on fixing everything in post. We should have spent a little bit more time in the beginning and preparing the visual effects as we were filming in camera, rather than thinking we could do it all after. An example being a window with a city background. We put a green screen up in that window thinking, oh, we're just gonna paint in a city background later. But back in those days to do motion tracking was a lot harder. So every time the frame moved, you had to match the background image in that green screen. Nowadays, it's way easier. Back then, it took forever. If I could meet any director, living or dead, it would have to be my hero, Orson Welles. I've read and own a lot of books about Orson Welles. Orson Welles. Orson Welles. Orson Welles. Orson Welles. More Orson Welles. More Orson Welles. Still more Orson Welles. I got more Orson Welles. You thought I was done. More Orson Welles. A bunch more Orson Welles. Even more Orson Welles. He was definitely one of the most fascinating people of the 20th century. The dude did it all. Theater, radio, television, movies. And he did it his own way. He made some great movies like Citizen Kane, Chimes at Midnight, Magnificent Ambersons, F for Fake is one of my favorites. He was also an incredibly interesting conversationalist. If you hear him talk in interviews or you listen to the audio tapes of Peter Bogdanovich's book, This is Orson Welles, the dude could talk for hours and he was never boring. I keep extremely busy. For the past several years I've been writing. I've got seven published books, including The Revengeist Trilogy, the novelization to The Killing Death, my first movie, and of course, the High School Hell Trilogy. I also have a couple of YouTube channels that I maintain, the official Ringo Jones Productions YouTube, which has got all my short films, trailers, interviews, random videos of me re reading children's books, and of course, Jeremy Sockman Movie Reviews, which is my other YouTube page of reviews of more obscure, classic films done by Sock Puppet.